rock and roll, baby. Oh, hang on. Let's just start the light the candle. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Vlogmas. Welcome to day six. Let's get straight into the questions. I asked you to ask me anything, make it Christmassy, dilemmas, struggles, random stuff, whatever. Let's see what you want to know and I will try and answer as many as possible. Okay, whoa. Mmm, okay. <laughs> Are you happier now than when you were married? I'm struggling through a separation at the moment and get so scared of being alone forever. I so understand. I so understand that feeling. Like I was married for a long time and there were times during that that I was, you know, I was really happy. Am I happier now than I was at the end? Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred and 20, 30, 40, 50 percent so much happier now than, than I was. I get that fear and the best advice that I can give you is that I've found personally that everything that I wanted is on the other side of that fear and it is much better to be alone than to be in the wrong relationship. What is your advice for anyone who wants to try and build friendship connections, especially if you lack confidence? Okay, so I would, I would start with the relationship with yourself. I think this is the most important relationship that you are ever going to have. If you're wanting to deepen existing relationships, you're going to have to be vulnerable, which means taking emotional risk, telling people how you feel, opening up a little bit, and what you will usually find is that other people open up to you in return. Friendships, any kind of connection, I think they take time, they take work, they take effort, they take you being a good listener, they take you checking in on people, asking to meet up, asking to do stuff, and most importantly, being your authentic self. If you're looking to meet new people, I think the best way to do this is through interests that you have. So whether that is hashtags on Instagram or you know local places that you like to go, location tags on Instagram, um, whether that is through a friend making app. I know people make friends online that way now. Or if you are in some kind of club, society, anything, anything like that. I think that the more you have in, in common with someone, the more likely you are going to be going to be friends. The lacking confidence thing, the best advice I've ever heard on this is from Alain de Botan, who runs the School of Life, which I absolutely love. And he says the best way to build confidence is to go where you have none. And I just love that. So it is all about tiny, tiny baby steps, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, doing little things that scare you every single day will help to build your confidence. Another great tip with confidence is to accept that just like everyone else on this planet, you are a complete and utter fool. You don't know what you're doing. You're really weird. Just like everyone else is, you're no different. I think accepting that helps you, you know, just feel a little bit more comfortable being vulnerable but give it time give it patience but be be consistent with it and if you do find I don't know any kind of rejection or, or setback just know that that's all part of, of relationship building some connections work out some don't the main thing is to not give up and and keep going beautiful wallpaper thank you I'm curious if you're still working on your fiction novel yes I am I am thousands and thousands of words into it now uh, the plan this year was just to start it. I want to go a lot slower with this book, whereas enough I had to write in six months because it was contracted. So yes, I am working on it, but but slowly, and that's the that's the way that I want it to unfold. I'm hoping to finish it by, I don't know, like the end of next year? Not to be negative, but are there any downsides to living in Paris? Yes, loads. It's so expensive. Um, it can be very, very busy. 
The hardest thing for me personally is long distance friendships. I miss my friends back home. We connect regularly, we FaceTime, we chat, WhatsApp, talk on the phone, all that kind of stuff. And they've all made the effort to come and see me and I see them when I'm back in the UK. But I do find not having those, you know, those soulmate, long standing friendships within easy reach physically difficult that's the hardest part of it for me but yeah it's it's really expensive i don't speak the language which can make it which can make it really difficult and it can be it can be really really busy i think it requires more effort to live a slow simple meaningful life in a city it requires much stronger boundaries than it does living in living in the countryside but on the whole i love it what makeup items are you loving at the minute and watching any good TV shows? So the TV shows that I have been loving lately have been The Crown. The Crown's back on Netflix. It's one of my absolute favorites. I don't watch much TV actually. And then the other one that I really loved was the Beckham documentary. I, I just thought it was full of so much nostalgia and the storytelling and the cinematography was really, really clever and they did the hero's journey so, so well. I had a few questions about makeup. I'm a, I'm a skincare girl and a skin treatments girl, so I focus on that. That is where most of my money budget goes in terms of beauty. And then I find that I can wear less makeup and I don't have to rely on it as much. My routine is very, very simple. I wear a tinted moisturiser, I wear an eyeshadow, I have the Charlotte Tilbury full face palette which I think has been discontinued but I love. Um, I wear a liquid liner, mascara, I like a lot of mascara on. I get my eyebrows microbladed and I've had my lips blushed so I just use a very um, natural brow gel on my eyebrows and a lip balm on my lips, a little bit of powder blush and then a cream blush on top and that is all, that's all I ever wear and that's day or night, I'm not, not really a makeup kind of person but that's, that's my usual routine. Do you know how long you're planning to live in Paris and do you plan to travel to other places in 2024? I always love your travel blogs. Thank you. I used to travel blog so much more than, than I do now. This year has just been taken up with Paris. So my visa is for one year and it runs out next summer. Right now, I think I will be extending it. I love that it covers the whole of Europe. I, over the summer, I made a travel bucket list and I have a lot of places that I'm dying to visit. I think next year I will definitely travel more. I really, really want to go to South Africa next year. That's the that's one of my big three places that, that I want to visit and hopefully I'm going to make it happen next year. And I'd love to see more of France as well because it's so easy to get around Europe once you're in it on, on the trains. Ooh. I have a few random questions. Do you ever have panic moments where you question decisions you've made or panic about what your future may hold? Yes, all the time. Most days I panic about that. But what I am finding is that to live a life that feels fulfilling and exciting, you have to learn to live alongside that fear. And I'm no longer as afraid of the outcome of those decisions. Like I'm okay with making the wrong decision now. I know it's not gonna be the end of the world. I know that things can be rectified. It's okay to make mistakes and it is much better to have tried something that your intuition is, you know, flickering for you to, to give a try than to not try at all and always regret that. How do you navigate things like medical care or veterinary care in a new country? Okay, so to get my French visa, I had to have medical insurance. Now I've been here for three months, I can apply for French medical care and veterinary care. I just went to the local vets and spoke in my broken French with my Translate app and one of the vets spoke English. So we got on really, really well and I, I signed Hope up there. We love Lucille, she's a lovely, lovely vet. And yeah, you just, you just figure it out. You just, you just manage, you speak to other people like you that have 
uh, moved here or you Google and you'll you'll find the answers. What's your hair care routine? I, okay, so I was asked, yeah, I've been asked this one quite a bit. I've been asked about my extensions. Do I still have that? Yes, I do. So I have extensions. I used to have them done back home. I've had to find a place that does them here and I've already been and, and had them redone. It was absolutely fine. I've had the same brand, so I have the great lengths hair extensions in. So if you go on their website, you can find your nearest salon and it turns out there are absolutely loads in Paris, so I didn't struggle to find one. I don't cut my hair, I don't dye my hair. It's, it's natural color. Um, in terms of hair care, I wash it with a fragrance-free, very sensitive scalp, scalp kind of shampoo, a conditioner, I switch, I change them around all the time. I'm not really too fussy, I just don't like anything with SLS in or anything with too much fragrance in. And then sometimes I'll use the Moroccan oil on the ends and that's it. Would you consider doing regular writing meetups on Substack or something similar? I loved your creative writing class this summer and would love to have more writing inspiration from you. Yes, Charlie, we can absolutely do that. My fear around stuff like that is that nobody would want to come or that how, you know, where in the world could we, could we have those? Um, but yes, that is absolutely something that I would love to do. I'm really glad that you enjoyed the creative writing class. I will, I'll start a thread over on Substack and we can all brainstorm on, on what's going to work for all of us. Hi Jess, can you share just what the heck people do with their laundry in Paris? So funny, I know, but it's not like NYC or standard. North America rental buildings or condos where many have in-building laundry facilities. I never see any content creators in Paris going to do laundry or pick up. I do not think I have seen a laundry facility on the street in any footage I viewed, ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so I feel lucky now in that I have a washing machine in my apartment. When I lived in the shoebox, I didn't have a washing machine. I used to go to the laundrette, which was just around the corner. There are absolutely loads of laundrettes. Right now, I have one just across the road and I have one around the corner. So I do my washing in the apartment and then I either air dry on a, you know, a dryer thingy uh, with the bedding though, I like that tumble dried, so I bundle it kind of like wet into the bag and run over, run over the road and yeah, put it in the tumble dryer, wait, and then bring it back. But there are loads of them. I've never seen an in an in building laundrette, but you you won't struggle to find a laundrette in Paris. There are absolutely loads of them. They're not the prettiest of places, which is probably why you're not seeing many content creators sharing it. Do, 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 do. How has Paris influenced, if any, your style of eating or cooking? Okay, so I've talked openly before about my struggles with food, eating. I talk about it in my book enough in great detail. I've had an eating disorder since I was 10 and I find, it makes me feel quite emotional actually, like I finally feel like I am starting to fall in love with food slowly and I have Paris to thank for that because people love food here, people love pleasure here and it is to be very much enjoyed. I am cooking for myself much more regularly and next year I am going to have cooking classes. I found a a recommendation, a lady who teaches cooking in her apartment, she's gonna teach me vegan cooking and she speaks really good English as well. Um, but it'd be a nice way to, to practice my French. So the way food has changed for me here is that the, the fast food, it just isn't as much of a, as a, of a thing. It's much more common to, yes, enjoy everything, but enjoy it in, in moderation. And when you do have something to eat, make sure that it you know it's worth it like it's really good like it's really really special um so yeah it's definitely influenced me and for for the better food isn't it's just not meant to be consumed quickly here either whereas in the uk you you know it's very common to just gobble down a meal as quickly as possible it's not to be savored and enjoyed so i think it's much more about 
I guess slow food over here and yeah just en enjoying the experience more instead of it being another thing to do to have to eat to want it to be as quick as as quick as possible definitely shifted there and I'm enjoying food much more here how do you respond to unwanted presents okay I'm very cutthroat with them my family laugh at me and they don't do it anymore because they know that I donate them I just give them away I take them to the charity shop or I give them to someone who I think would get value from them I point blank refuse it's a really strong boundary of mine I point blank refuse to have anything in my house to be very William Morris about it that I don't love and I don't use and even though the intention was was pure I mean I don't tell the person you know, I, I receive it um, with, with gratitude for sure, but I refuse to have things in, in my house. I actually think it's okay to tell a white lie in terms of unwanted presence. Maybe it got broken, maybe if they ever ask about it, it got lost, you know, things like that. I don't keep them, I donate them, I pass them on, I, lo I let that stuff go. Ooh. Any journal prompts for Christmas for reconnecting with softness, hope and joy? Oh, I love this. My friend Kate gave me a really nice prompt the other day and she was talking about the time capsule and she said, what would be in your time capsule for the year? So I think that's a really nice journal prompt to start with, asking yourself, what will be my time capsule for 2023? What are the, you know, the real highlights for you? Um, just to refocus on what it was that added value, what you did enjoy this year, and then maybe how you can, you can carry that on moving forwards. Another one that I really, really like is what do I need right now? And also if, ti if time and money weren't an issue, what would I do? I love that one because that one really opens you up and allows you to, to dream. And the what do I need right now will encourage you to look after yourself in the way that you would a really dear friend that you love or a child. So I think those would all bring gratitude, love, softness, and also hopes for the future as well. Why is your French coming along? Très bien. I have lessons. Uh, cours deux fois par semaine. So I have lessons twice a week with Lingoda and I try and practice as much as possible even if I'm getting it wrong, even if I make a fool of myself and I'm really enjoying the process of learning a new language. Okay, do you feel pressure to attend family gatherings at this time of year? How do you protect your energy? I feel quite lucky in that my family is small so I don't feel pressure, but I have felt pressure in the past. And the way that I have dealt with that is to think about boundaries, to think about what it is that I am available for, how much time and energy I actually have, and then drawing a boundary around that. Also, when you are at a gathering, if you do go, again, use your boundaries. It's okay to say, I really don't wanna talk about this right now, or can, you know, can we talk about something else? Or I'm tired, I'm ready to go home now. All of those things, they're okay. I think nailing your, your boundaries and exercising them really well is the answer to dealing with family gatherings. How do you find the courage to leave a relationship which you know inside isn't right? Oh, yeah, that's difficult. Okay, something that my therapist said, I'll share. She said that no relationship is perfect, it's about whether it's good enough. I think that's the question that you have to, that you have to answer because I think it's easier to find the courage when you are 100% certain. And the other thing to do is to make sure that you've tried everything that you could. I think it's easier to let go of something when you know that there is absolutely nothing else that you could do. In terms of finding the courage, I think that takes self-trust and I think that takes self-belief. And I think that is a practice that is to be cultivated. I think you have to have faith in yourself. You have to have a vision that you will be okay on, on the other side, which you will, you absolutely will. 
um, and that not everything, you know, not everything lasts forever and having, having this, the inner strength to accept that and to let it go. Do you have any favourite perfumes? Yes, I absolutely love Le Labo Noir 29. Te Noir 29. I wear it every day. It's the only perfume that I wear. It's ridiculously expensive. I buy one bottle a year and make it last all the way through. But I love that brand. I love their fragrances. Are you spending Christmas in Paris or the UK? I'm going back to the UK. Hope and I are going back to the UK. My mum is coming to Calais with her friend, they're having a night, I'm going to meet them there and we're all going back on the train together. I don't know when I'll come back to Paris, I haven't booked a return ticket, I'm just gonna see how I feel and come back when I'm ready. Christmas time is an emotional time for lots of people. What is the most difficult part of Christmas for you? So Christmas for me is all centered around grief. My granddad not being here anymore in particular is really, really hard. I find that really, really difficult at Christmas. And then I've always, I've always felt really sad about the things that I never felt that I had in terms of the family experience. That's really, really hard for me. And also grieving the, you know, past Christmases, that makes me feel really, really sad but it's something that I know that I have to, to process and grief is so complex, right? There are so many different stages with it. You can leap forward, you can fall back. It can be, it can be really, really hard and it can feel so, so sad. And then I feel like, you know, you should be grateful. You're so, you, you, you know, you shouldn't be sad. You shouldn't feel miserable. You shouldn't grieve. You should feel grateful for, for what you have. And yes, that's true, but also grief is very much part of being a human. I once read that we are never more human, we're never more fully alive than when we're grieving because we're experiencing all of the emotions, we're experiencing life to the fullest. So it is something to be embraced, but I find it really, really hard because the emotions that come with grief are difficult and not very nice to sit with. But yeah, they're the, they're, that's the, the hardest part of Christmas for me. Oh, I love this question. What three things, places, feelings, anything has made you happiest this year? I love this question. Can everyone answer this question in the comments? I would love to read your answers to this. Mine would be, mm, one particular date that I had in Paris that was very, very special to me, very, very magical. That definitely made me the happiest. The second thing would be the feeling when I got this apartment. When my landlord even phoned me and said that he wanted me, he wanted me to have it, I literally, I was on the phone, I was trying not to sound too excited, but I was literally jumping up and down in the street. It felt so good because the struggle had been so hard. And then Hope and I, we were already on our way to the park and we literally just like skipped and ran around the park and anyone that saw me that day must have thought I was absolutely crazy. But I was so full of dopamine and euphoria. It was incredible. And the third thing I would say would be spending time with my mom in Paris. She came for a few days in the summer and we just had the loveliest few days. It was, it was really, really special. It was really, really nice. Hmm. How do you decide what to buy for others? So I'm assuming this is Christmassy. I think the best thing to do is to focus, from a minimalist point of view, is to focus on experiences over things or things that that person would actually love and use. So a really good thing to do, if you feel able, is to ask someone what it is that they actually want. But I think giving people experiences is a really nice thing. Even if it's taking them out for a coffee, taking them out for lunch or a breakfast or a dinner, or maybe, I mean, what can be really, really great if you know them well, and I do this with my friends, is to find out what that person's love language is. I sent my, all my friends the, the love language quiz and I'll link it in the description. And I have, the, I have their love languages like written down on my, on my phone so that I know. 
and then you can use that to come up with a really good gift idea for them because you know what it is that they value. Another nice tip is to buy them something from a really beautiful uh, quality or expensive brand, but buy them like the cheapest thing from that brand. So think less but better. I think it's really nice to get something that is very, very small, but quality as opposed to something, you know, that looks that looks bigger or there is, there is more of that thing. It's so lovely to receive a really tiny luxury gift. How has your relationship with your mom changed since you moved, if in any way at all? It has changed. My relationship with my mom has been turbulent over the last few years, to say the least. My mom, you know, she raised me alone. We were a, a one parent family from the, from the beginning and we are, so we're very, very close and we always have been. But yeah, these, these last few years, I think since I started therapy, our relationship got quite, quite rocky. And it is now in the best place that it ever has been. My mom has actually, I think this is every like kid's dream. <laughs> My mom has actually started therapy this year. She started CBT therapy. And often it's like I'm talking to a different person. It's changed and helped her so, so much. And I personally have found the distance with my mom has benefited our relationship. I think that we lived too close together. I think we saw each other a little bit too much. I think that is definitely possible. The distance has, it's given me the freedom to step into my own identity away from, from my mom, to try new things, to figure, to really like solidify who I am who I want to be away from all of those constraints and expectations. We talk on the phone every single day. She comes here, I go home and yeah, it, it really does feel the healthiest that it has ever, ever been. How are you finding the nose job? It's an idea I've toyed with for many, many years and would love your honesty. Okay, so I've written about my nose reshape surgery in a substack piece I wrote about it earlier this year. I don't talk about it very often because it's not something that I want to be known for and I never want to appear to be promoting surgery. I have a very non-judgmental approach to surgery. I think you do whatever it is that you want to do, just do it from a place where you know that any kind of alterations, will not affect your self-worth. It will not affect that and it will not change the internal relationship that you have with that either. So there are two sides to the nose thing. There's the physical side and the emotional side. I wish I'd been more prepared for both. The physical side of it, I'm a year post-op now and I like it, but it's not, my expectations weren't, they weren't met with it. And to try and meet those, I would have to have another surgery, which is apparently very, very common. So just, it, like it's a big deal. It's a really big decision that you have to make and it's a risk as well. And you are not guaranteed the results that you have in your head. And it's a really emotional wild ride. It's actually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I regret it in that I wouldn't go back. I'm happy that I had it. It just hasn't, it hasn't been what I expected. It's been really, really difficult. And I would say that it has made me more, not, yeah, it probably, yeah, like it's probably made me more self-conscious than I was than I was before. It's not something to go into lightly. If you're going to do it, do your research, find a very good surgeon with good recommendations, see quite a few of them have, you know, different consultations, be prepared that it might not turn out the way that you want it to. Do not watch YouTube videos that tell you that in two weeks, a month, it's all gonna be fine, you're gonna be so happy with it that's not the way that it happens to most for most people so yeah it's a really big 
decision to make. Don't go into it lightly and be, be prepared for it not to work out, but most definitely do, do your research and do what, do what feels right for you. How do your days look? Do you follow a specific schedule or just go with your intuitions? I would say that I strike a balance. So I have, I have a few things that I like to do every day. I have a very strict morning routine, which I can make a full video on if you want to see more detail on that. But basically I meditate, well, I write. So as soon as I get out of bed in the morning, I always write, it's the first thing that I do. And then I know I've hit my daily word count, that side of life is done. Then I meditate, I journal, and I do yoga and Pilates, and that's every single morning. After that, I would say that I'm intuition led, and lately I am very much getting back into menstrual cycle tracking because I'm finding that no matter how hard I try to come up with the ideal work week, the ideal routine, I am not able to, to fit with that. And what I really want to do is step back into my, into my femininity, into my intuition, and let that be my guide in terms of energy. And also I have the freedom to be able to do that because of the kind of work that I do. So it feels obvious that that is what I, that's what I should be doing. So yes, I would say a little bit of balance, like there's little things that I like to do every single day at a certain time, but mostly intuition led is the, is the way for me. I find it hard though. I find it really, really difficult. I think I, you know, we, we go to school, right? That's how we learn where to manage our time and we have timetables and we live in this very masculine world where everything is supposed to be logical, scheduled, work, and it's all about productivity and doing more and more and more. And it just doesn't suit us. It just does not suit us. It's not natural. It's not, it, it just, it just doesn't work. So being intuition led is most definitely the way that I, that I strive to be, but it is, it is a struggle. Thank you so much for the questions. I tried to get through as many of them as possible. I hope that they've helped. Hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to let me know your three favorites of the year in the comments. I can't wait to read those and I will see you tomorrow.